Hello, and welcome to this second video. We're looking to a few of the chords that are central to Carter's changes, and we're looking at how to use improvisation as a way to get from recognizing these chords on the score to feeling them directly under the fingers. In our first video, we worked with the all interval tetrachord. And now we're going to look at perhaps the most important chord in changes, the all trichord hexachord. The all trichord hexachord is a six note sonority that contains all of the 12 possible trichord classes. So let's go to the very last measure of changes. So this is a six note, six note sonority. And in fact, it's an all trichord hexachord. We can check by extracting from it the 12 possible trichord classes. I'll run through them. So in this sound, it contains 012, 013, 014, 015, 016, 024, 025, 026, 027, 036, 037, and finally 048. And this is actually one of the exercises in, um, in the written up exercises. Now it's unlikely, you, you won't find I think a passage in Elliot, Elliot Carter's music where he just goes through all 12 chords like that. But he usually goes through some of them. So if we look earlier in that section, the last section of changes, you hear at one point this. turning the prism and going through uh, some of these chords. And then later on in the section he goes through some more. As though to tell you about the properties of this chord. The all trichord hexachord is a complex sonority and we need a way of forming and recognizing it almost instantly. It turns out that there is a way and it's quite easy to master. Here's what we do. We start with an augmented triad, then we add to it a member of trichord number five, or 016. The result will be an all, interval, um, an all trichord hexachord. Now as we do this, we have to take care not to duplicate any pitch classes, so that there are six unique pitch classes in the result. We don't want any unisons or octaves in the combination. Now, no matter how you follow this recipe, here I'm trying the same augmented triad with different voicings of 016. But the result will always be an all trichord hexachord. You can reverse the steps as well. Start with 016, then add an augmented triad. Now, I'm going to assume that most guitarists have the augmented triad under their fingers because it's such a common sonority and it can be found in manuals of chords for guitarists. But what about the trichord 016? A composer friend of mine likes to call it the Maria chord because it's the first three notes of Bernstein's song Maria. So you can form a Maria chord, an 01, an 016, by simply following the notes of the melody, placing the notes in any register, and of course learning to play Maria upside down. But if you remember that you just need a perfect interval, and then take either of its two pitches and add another note of semitone away from one of them, 
um, taking care to do it in a direction that forms a tritone with the other note, then you're guaranteed to get an 016. And with practice, you'll get very fast at it. In fact, you'll learn to recognize common guitar shapes that give us our 016, like this shape, or this shape. And so on. So now let's practice our method for forming the all trichord hexachord. We'll start with recognition. Quite early in changes at the climax of one of the episodes, Carter sounds this chord. Let's check to see whether it's an all trichord hexachord. So it does contain an augmented triad. So now let's check the remaining three notes. These indeed form an 016 trichord, so we do have an all trichord hexachord under our fingers. Now let's use this chord as the basis for an improvisation. We have the augmented triad, and as we saw, Carter combines it with this transposition of 016. But there were other choices for the 016. In fact, for any augmented triad, there are six transpositions of 016 available. In my written notes to this exercise, I've written them out in a musical example like this. This is the Carters, but there's also five more versions of 016 all of which combine with our augmented triad to form an all trichord hexachord. Now in my notes, I encourage you to discover trichords in this way, just by trial and error. I think this kind of discovery learning is absolutely indispensable. And in time, you'll discover that there are many ways of getting to the six trichords systematically. But now let's try to make an improvisation using just this one augmented triad. And the six available 016 chords in various voicings and registers. I'll keep combining the different versions of 016 with the original augmented triad, so you'll hear a lot of this sound. And my plan is never to change it, not to revoice it into some other, into different registers. And the result will be nothing but articulations of the old trichord hexachord. So I'll start with Carter's original chord, break it down, and then gradually introduce um, different versions of 016. <laughs> Now, as I play like this, I'm not really performing. 
I'm practicing. I'm going no faster than I can follow with my mind, so that I'm always aware of playing the augmented triad, and always aware that I'm playing three notes. And so on, that make up an 016 sonority. This could be compared to learning to write. Um, when we form the letters of the alphabet as children, the movements have no meaning, except insofar as we say to ourselves, I'm writing the letter A, and now I'm writing the letter B, and so on. But in time, the movements seem to become meaningful just in themselves, and we're able to say that our knowledge is embodied. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have fun with your improvisations.